we've got to finish the music. Hi, this is Bill Safer, and welcome to another episode of Hidden Treasures. We're coming to you from the studios of WCCA in downtown Worcester. Before we get to our very special returning guests, I would like to do some hellos or shout outs, as we call them. I'd like to say hello to Veterans Incorporated on Grove Street here in Worcester. Colonel Perone is the director, and he and his staff really do wonderful work for the veterans. And I'm sure Veterans Inc. has saved many veterans' lives due to the great work they do with the veterans involving medical, involving uh, emotional problems, PTSD, and I know they've saved a lot of lives. And I saw Colonel Perone uh, the other day and spoke with him for a little while. You can't meet a more caring, intelligent, and helpful man than Colonel Perone and his staff. And I wanted to talk to you about market calendars for June 11th to June 14th, 2020. This year, the WCCA Second Annual Jazz Fest will be held over a four-day period in different venues, culminating on June 14th with the main event on the Worcester Common. <clears throat> jazz greats from all over will be playing. There will be food trucks, the beer garden, and they're all participating to make this a memorable jazz fest. So stay tuned. We'll have more information as time goes by. I'd also like to say hello to Restore Home, part of Habitat for Humanity. You can donate many household items uh, to, to Restore Home, and they will help to furnish a home where people couldn't afford to buy furniture. I know I've donated some of my own furniture, and you know, if you, it, why throw it away if it can help somebody? Um, okay, now I would like to introduce my very special guest, Wayne Tuscola of Central Mass Auctions. Wayne has been a guest on this show a number of times and was an appraiser at our annual, I mean our semi-annual appraisal day here at the station. He is an auctioneer extraordinaire, a master at his craft, and he always has interesting shows. And welcome, Wayne. Oh, thank you, Bill. It's nice to be back here. Yeah, but thank you. Now, um, just for people that don't know, could we get your uh, website address? Sure. It's centralmassauctions.com. That's uh, M A S S, -S, -S and auctions, auctions with an S. Okay. Uh, do you have a Facebook page? We do. It's uh, facebook.com uh, forward slash Central Mass Auctions. Okay. And a phone? 508. Uh, 612-6111. Okay, thank you. And there's some questions I'm going to repeat just for the new viewers. If somebody has something <clears throat> that they think is valuable or they want to possibly sell, uh, can they bring it to you? Do they need an appointment or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, usually uh, people will send pictures now and that's a good way to start. They email them to info at centralmassauctions.com and then we can see if they're a good fit for us. Um, we run a little bit more of an upscale auction house, and there are, try to, there are certain things that maybe that aren't right for us, and we can point them in the right direction if they're not a good fit. So. Well, that's good. Now, you do also do estate sales. I saw your, what's your daughter's name again? Lauren. Lauren. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> um, and your wife's name? Amy. Hi, Lauren and Amy. Yeah, I have a good father and a good husband here. I won't tell you about the other girlfriends. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, Lauren was explaining about the estate sales on your website. Yes. <clears throat> and I didn't realize that you did estate sales. And could you explain a little bit how that differs from an auction? Yeah, so um, we, sometimes it's a combination of both. We, we do um, three, three different things, actually. There, uh, an estate sale, which is... Uh, tag sale people commonly refer to them as and that's where everything is priced and people uh, typically line up before it uh, they'll be waiting at nine o'clock on a sat Saturday to get in and then ev everything is priced they can pay for it and take it away uh, right then uh, the there's an online auction which is kind of a combination of an auction and an estate sale where everything's tagged in the house uh, might be the, the, this desk might be num number one chairs number two and so, so you can you can put a bit over the fo over the computer yes or the phone uh, just by computer that's, only. yeah, yeah. That's, who knows what the phone ends up <laughs> right. and you can go in person 
Yeah, so we get, give, typically do with something that a lot of other online auction houses don't do is uh, offer a preview prior to the bidding, the ending of the bid. So yeah, no one else does an, a preview of an estate auction. I've never heard of it, but that, I would love that. It, it's helpful because people can actually come in and see things, and a lot of times they might see something for a family member, and they can tell them come come down, and you still yeah. have time to come look at it, and. So that works out pretty well. And then we have live auctions, and that's for the typically the more valuable antiques. And um, but uh, so that's uh, we run those maybe every three or four months. We're lo looking for quality items for oh, that. I know you you sell you auction off beautiful things. You know I've been to auctions where there was like an old briefcase full mm -hmm. of stamps and like every Tupperware container known to man, and people were buying things for five dollars and ten dollars. I thought it was antiques uh, yeah. but I sat there just because I thought it would be impolite to go but you do have to kind of ask about the auction because not auctions all auctions and auctioneers as you know aren't the same right, right. you know you, you're in a higher caliber um, I would say because of the things you get and the things you auction off um, I've seen some of your preview things and some of your pictures and um, it's amazing the, that People come from all over. Plus, you heavily advertise, and uh, that's that's vital because I've had a, I had a dealing years ago with an auctioneer that whose name will remain nameless because he didn't have any advertising. There was like ten people in the room, so they had, they could get whatever they wanted. And a couple of them are wealthy, and they got all the they bought all the good things, and there was no fighting. So they probably lost thousands and thousands of dollars that you would have on a competitive bid. So, you know. Yeah, we do promote heavily. Um, we uh, maybe even times we some of the things have ended up in the newspaper when we uh, yes. and yeah. along with um, all the websites, antique related websites. We also put articles in print in uh, one of the print publications because some of our buyers that are older don't deal with the internet that much, and uh, so we try to cast a wide net and at last auction we had, I think we had a over 120 registered bidders wow. so we get good sized crowds. Yeah I've seen your ads in, pap in the paper, the antique papers all over. Um, now uh, didn't you donate um, some baseball memorabilia to the Polar Park or on loan so to speak? Yeah uh, we've been in uh, dis discussions we just really just started the preliminary discussions uh, w with um, President Dr. Charles Steinberg and uh, so I, I'm planning to loan them some things. I've, I've always had an interest in local history, and a couple of things I collect are uh, Worcester sports memorabilia and Worcester railroad memorabilia. Oh, yeah. So I have some uh, kind, uh, some pretty important uh, pieces when, uh, when Worcester's uh, contract, when they had a professional team in the 1880s, and some photos from that. You brought but, some things on another show. I, I, I did. So the right. pe I, people, uh, if you watch, you can watch any of my shows on WCCATV.com, back to show one up to 78, which I believe this is. And Wayne has been on three or four times, so you'll be able to see those those posters. Because uh, at the time, we who knew that they were going to be, it, should be shown, loaned to the baseball player team you know yeah and so they'll end up in the park uh, somewhere I'm hoping and people public will be able to, to see them and uh, I, I'm also uh, still always looking for things related to some of the Worcester players and Worcester teams if an, anybody on out there has them uh, please contact me oh yeah because Worcester is is so rich in history I mean it was one of the original 13 colonies it, it's a port state which means that Goods have been coming over from wooden ships all the way up until now, and you never know what's going to be in a New England attic. I know from stories I've heard and people that actually found valuable things, uh, it's like scrimshaw. A lot of people look at that and they don't know what it is. They think it's like the doodling on. And this woman, when it was legal, now it's very difficult to sell anything made of ivory, right. even if it's antique. They claim that before like 1895 or something you could sell it, but you have to prove. So how are you going to prove a whale was killed in the 1700s? Yeah. You know, knowing the relatives are alive, at least that can talk. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're in a... So a lady from uh, up near Gloucester, she asked me, is this anything? It was the biggest bull sperm whale tooth I ever had, and the, the scrimshaw on it was so perfect, 
it had the name of the ship, it had a flag, it was very detailed. And so I told them at the time to take it down to the Nantucket Whaling Museum and get some information. And she ended up auctioning it at um, uh, Sotheby's, oh. and it went for multi thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, you always have to you always have to check with a gentleman like Wayne, because I'll tell another quick story I've told before, where the, I was doing an, a senior citizen appraisal, and I said, "Bring a couple of things." A lady walks up to me and said, "I might have told you this, but she said, is this anything I'm going to put it on my yard sale tomorrow?" Take a look at it. She pulls it out of a velvet pouch. It's a size 18, which is the biggest, one of the biggest sizes of pocket watches. Solid 18 karat gold, made by Tiffany's. 27 jewels. It had gold gears and rubies and a see-through back so you could see the works and engraving. So she said, I was thinking of asking $25. So I said, $25? I said, where is this yard sale again? <laughs> I said, no. I, I said, in all honesty, don't put it in your yard sale. This is a museum piece. This is a salesman, a salesman or a show display sample. And for every 10 million watches they made, they maybe made one or two of these. So take it to an antique shop or a reputable jeweler, Boston or Worcester, wherever you, and just get some information on it. I said, this is something that may be a big chunk of your retirement. I said, this is a very important piece. So I said, don't forget now. When I first you left, I said, don't put that in the auction. <laughs> so that's what happens. People don't know. Y yeah. It's like we were talking about the lady on the Antiques Roadshow that had Pablo Picasso pottery hanging on her kitchen wall for 25 years, covered with grease, and as the, we say in Yiddish schmutz, <laughs> dirt, mm -hmm. everything. Once it was cleaned off, uh, a friend convinced her to go to the antique shirt, so it was a real Picasso and sold for thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, I wanted to ask you, Wayne, do you ever get native uh, Massachusetts or New England Native American goods? You know, I, I, uh, t timing's good on that. I actually just went into an estate, and they have a pretty nice collection. They had a farm, and uh, was they, uh, as they uh, tilled the soil, some th items turned up, and uh, they said, the family uh, told me that uh, they actually had a professor from one of the local colleges who did um, went through some of the pieces and uh, they they collected them. So I may be getting that. Oh, uh, that would auction. Be, I find that what the auctions I've gone to and the articles I've read, uh, Native American anything from anywhere is is extremely valuable. I, I saw a, um, a man who took pictures in the 1800s. It wasn't a famous man like the ones we usually have. But it was someone who took pictures of Indian chiefs, and he went around the United States, and that book sold for way, way over what they thought, because these were black and white, like daguerreotypes of Indians, and they were perfectly clear. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, that's a that's a, a dying breed. The, there's not many left, and the ones there's a few that can trace their heritage back to Geronimo or one of the great leaders, but a lot of them have gone. And uh, just as a side note. Uh, a man died, the last man who was in the um, Apache Code Talkers. Did you hear about them in World War II? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, they got honored at the White House recently. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was a case where they used Apache language and they have Native American soldiers who would send the messages in Navajo or Apache and the Germans or the Japanese never broke it. We broke the enigma from the Germans, but they could never break the Navajo, or nothing beats that. They just nothing to refer to. Yeah. So that saved a lot of lives and saved a lot of ships and planes from being sunk and shot down. So, yeah, and even the uh, the Enigma machines themselves are uh, have some value. I saw one recently sold for a pretty uh, good amount of money. Uh, I didn't realize any of them were around. Yeah, uh, it was one uh, recently, and I think it was in the tens of thousands. I think it might have been over in Europe uh, where they found it. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. And that's another th topic. War, World yeah. War I, World War II, Civil War. Yeah. And if you ever get anything from the Revolution or anything, yeah. you know, I've, I used to work when I got out of the Army at Paul Revere, and they had Paul Revere silver there, okay. but now it's at the Art Museum. And I was just picturing, uh, you know, seeing something like this at a yard sale, you yeah. know, because multi, not millions of dollars. They had like, they had like eight, ten pieces. 
Yeah, I think they're going to be uh, actually doing a um, Paul Revere re related exhibition here in Worcester soon. I think the Antiquarian Society is involved with it, but I think the Art Museum oh. as well. So um, look, look for that on the, the calendar. calendar. That would be an interesting thing. I haven't seen those things for over 40 years. So they're probably more valuable now, I'm sure. I, I would imagine. And, and they had a printer's plate uh, from uh, that of his that was one of the things in the ex ex exhibition. I've seen a couple um, of books. I collect miniature books, but I've seen a couple of regular books from Ben Franklin that surfaced, and they also go for Ben Franklin because anything to do with him right. or anything to do with the revolutionary period. There was even an article about how John Adams disowned one of his sons because he became an alcoholic. He didn't go to law school, and somebody wrote about that, and that went for big money nice. because... He, ha he didn't like that, of course, in his family. His other son became a president. And, uh, you know, it's like George Washington's teeth. Right. You know, everybody claims to have a set of George Washington's <laughs> teeth, but uh, very few are originals. Yeah. But the original ones, I understand, were ivory. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I think I read that, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the wooden what, stories uh, fallacy, I guess. Now, you brought some pictures. Yeah. Was this from your last auction? Th this is. And uh, so... I, I was going to st uh, start with some of the things that didn't bring as much, but I'm going to start with one of the top items because okay. when you and I speak, uh, we usually go through this time pretty quickly. So yes, I that's right. <laughs> so I figured we'd get to, the, and I'll put them in the what they call the special uh, spot. So uh, not uh, antique with incredible age here, but uh, it's a 1962 copy of the Hulk. Uh, I had comic some book. of these, and I gave them away. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to really be sorry you did when I tell you what it sold for. You, this was uh, taped along the edges, and it was just a kind of a fair condition one. And even in that condition, it brought thirty-five hundred dollars. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty. Thirty-five hundred. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm, I, anybody with comic books, uh, give me a call. We've seen they're selling particularly well. I, that is a big sellout. And uh, my mother, believe it or not, she remembers her her uh, her uncle sold comic books to stores and would give her the ones that the covers came off. Oh. She said she had number one of Superman. Oh, no. Yeah. And but I had no cover. I yeah. said, I don't care if it was missing pages. It'd be it, worth something. It, it, definitely. And here's a pretty large uh, set of uh, sterling silver. We typically don't you don't see that many pieces. It was a nine-piece set, including the tray, and um, brought uh, $3,100. I mean, to see that many pieces that aren't silver plate, that's amazing. Yeah. Because you don't see too much really solid sterling. You don't, and especially to have the tray uh, be solid sterling, because almost always I see them there silver plate. But it was it's, nice to have that. That's beautiful. Um, do, do a lot with uh, artwork, and this was um, painting by F.S. Church. So older. Oh, I've uh, heard of him. Uh, older Very famous. It's it called the Stowaway, and um, so any, any pictures by listed artists, and you could do a little research yourself uh, at home, um, look up some of the artists. But uh, he was listed well, and that brought uh, well, brought over a thousand dollars. Wow! Them. So uh, people can make some serious money if they're willing to part with some things that aren't sentimental or things like that. You know. Definitely, yeah, 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 and and more and more people are looking to downsize, lighten the load, uh, and um, want to simplify their lives. So there are a lot of people willing to part with things now. It's it's amazing, and uh, this one. Now I've I've seen one of these years ago in an antique shop, uh, okay. and it was like thirty five dollars. And uh, that's uh, another thing that you you can't go back, but you, you yeah. knowledge is power, and the more knowledge you have of what's collectible, like these, uh, I believe, are soda, uh, to make soda, juices, so, so, yeah, so, syrups. Soda fountain syrup dispensers, you're right. And so that one is Cherry Smash, the other one's Ward's Orange Crush. Which are no longer, oh, Orange Crush is still around. Is uh, that the same uh, company, uh, I wonder? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was Ward's. I think there were a number of Orange Crushes, uh, uh, so I, I don't think they're tied together, but... But these are beautiful. What are these porcelain? Or? Yeah, they were porcelain, and th yeah, this one especially was nice. And that brought um, thirteen hundred, and the other one was about a thousand. They're beautiful. I mean, the the, the lithograph. Oh, I believe it's lithograph, right? That's yeah, yes, beautiful. Yeah, and advertising things in general, 
sell well old advertising signs, enamel signs. We had a Fisk tire sign even that with some dings on it brought uh, 800, I think. Oh, I see on the uh, Antiques Roadshow, they sometimes find them under the, uh, under the dirt at, in a farm. Oh, right. And they clean it off and it still goes for big money. <laughs> you know? It's true, true. Yeah. Yeah, there's, ah. a, there's a uh, Colt revolver and that was uh, 1860s. Is this by any chance a walker? I, I don't Cold? think it was a walker. It, I think it was the uh, Army model. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. And, and um, so that was in the $1,000 range on that. Uh, and condition is a big factor. We've had some bring 2000 before in the past. W so. Was this in functioning uh, condition, do I, you think? Yeah, it, it looked uh, pretty good. And another thing to check for if you have these at home, look for matching serial numbers because sometimes right. the people find the parts and put one together. And this one... They all matched, uh, so it, it did seem to be pretty good. I d don't know if I'd want to fire it until you get it checked over. Well, at least until your blue cross is cleaned up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, That's but, beautiful. That is, uh, so that was a gun typically carried by a Civil War soldier. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll stick with the weapons. This one's got oh. chopped off a little, but uh, I think I might be two pictures there again. But that's a little ironic, chopped uh, off, being uh, a samurai uh, sword. Right. I used to collect them, and that looks very nice. Yeah, yeah, that one um, uh, might have been had some uh, pieces where it uh, were put together, but the good part of it was um, you, you look at the tang, the piece. Uh, Did it have? It was signed. Uh, yeah, it was signed, uh -huh. and so. But um, I had some, someone look at it, thought it might have been World War II era, and that brought uh, high hundreds on that one. That's beautiful. Uh, you know that that you know, but a lot of people don't realize that because it's a World War II officer sword. It still could have a thousand-year-old blade in it because sometimes they put their ancestors' blades yeah. in a modern housing. True, true. And uh, a lot of people have uh, didn't know that and and sold it as a World War II, and without looking at the tang or anything, because sometimes the tang tells you um, even how many they used to test them, you know, on criminals wow. and cadavers. How many bodies would go through with one swipe? Wow, okay. And the record I think is four. So you can picture them in battle. It would look like a haddock stew when they were done. <laughs> That's, uh, the soap, just pieces. They're like big razor blades. But that was great. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. And, and um, so th then uh, jewelry is always good. This was uh, an estate piece. Um, it a uh, brooch with um, had some diamonds and 18 karat gold. And uh, so uh, we all try to tell people that if they have pieces like this, you're going to get much more than melt value to sell it at auction. It's, um, and, what, it, and what era was this? Excuse me. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that I believe was around circa, circa 20s, 30s. Oh. So, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, brought uh, around $1,000 and again, well above scrap uh, prices. That's, um, you know, that's something I've told people that you have a piece of jewelry and they want to run down to the pawn shop and, you know, scrap it. And I said, this is a whole complete piece. You have to see, uh, this was years ago, now I'd recommend you, because this could be worth far more than the uh, value that you just scrapped. Exactly. And, oh, and, coins and, are big. Yeah, coins are always good. And we uh, had some that uh, came out of an estate, and we um, looked through them. So there a couple of uh, silver dollars had uh, better dates. So they sold by themselves for three hundred. Where so for a single for a single wow. one. One was three hundred and two. The other was two hundred something. So they, uh, it, it's good to have your coins looked at and don't sell those again for silver because you might end up with a rare date. We've had uh, one with a Carson City, a CC mint mark yeah. that that brought. Um, I think around 30, well over 3,000. So. You have the New Orleans uh, mint yeah. that's... Yeah, they can, some of those can be desirable, so old mint. Uh, so, so uh, you know, typically they may sell them for $10, depending on what silver's going for, but have them looked at, because you could have those rare ones in there as well. Is that a, is that a, a Morgan dollar, is yes. that what they call it? And yeah. the other one is the piece, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, both collectible. Right. And... Uh, I used to, when I was a kid in the 60s, I used to go to a holiday party, and a very wealthy man used to give every child a real silver dollar. Oh. And we would run down and buy penny candy with them. And then my father saw that we were doing that, and he said, and I had four brothers and sisters, I, he said, how about you give me the silver dollars, I'll give you a paper dollar, 
and I'll just put them away. And when my father passed away, I found a whole box of, I don't know, there was 15 or 20 oh. silver dollars, and I did check the dates. And a w couple of them were CC, and one was O, or I believe, yeah, I believe it was O. And uh, so oh, good. you never know. Yeah. And that's why I, uh, if, you, if you do find that you have coins in your house uh, and jewelry, bring them to Wayne. You know, why miss out? I'm sure you have stories of people that have sold multi-thousand dollar things for next to nothing. And yeah, going back to the comic books, yeah. I had someone call me and um, he had something I really wasn't interested in, but I started at going through the list of other things that might be valuable. He said, well, I just got rid of a pile of uh, comics. Someone had put an ad in buying them, and uh, he, so he, he sold them to them. And he said there were ones from the 1930s that might might have been and superhero the ones. golden and, age the golden age and it could, could could have been a Superman worth uh, you know nearly a million dollars in there and he sold them and he said the person who never put that ad back in the paper they were done they made their well, big they knew uh, what they were doing yeah well Wayne uh, as always happens in this case the show is coming to a close um, I want to thank you very thank much you, thank for you, coming thank you, though. and I would like you to come back. Uh, I consider you. you a regular because well, you, you always bring interesting information. And for those of our viewers, uh, if you like what you see, please show your support for shows like the one you have just enjoyed, which was Hidden Treasures. It's easy, fast, and secure. Simply text WCCA TV to 243 725 and make a tax donation of whatever amount you would like. We would be grateful. Thank you. Visit Wayne Tuscola at Central Mass Auctions with your treasures and go out and find a treasure. But have it looked at before you sell it. Thanks, Wayne. Oh, thank you. Oh, always a pleasure. Yeah, I always get so many compliments when you come.